So welcome back. Today we are playing this budget green-white artifacts deck. It actually only has 10 rares. Let's jump in and take a look. So we have four copies of Teething Wormlet. For one green, we get a 1-1. One, one. Has Death Touch as long as we control three of our artifacts. And whenever an artifact ETB is under our control, we gain a life and put a counter on it as long as it's the first time this ability has resolved. We have three copies of Screlve to protect our other creatures. We're going to be putting a lot of plus one, plus one counters on our stuff. So Screlve is nice to be able to protect those growing creatures. And then our last rare, not counting the lands, is Ozolith. So we have three of these. It's an artifact itself, so it triggers our stuff. And if one or more counters would be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one are put on it instead. You can also activate it for one in a green to put a counter on target artifact or creature you control. We then have four copies of Ginger Brute. It's an artifact, one one with haste. You can also pay one so that it can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. So if you dump a bunch of counters on Ginger Brute, you can pay one and essentially make it unblockable, try and finish off an opponent. We have four copies of Glass Casket. Artifact removal lets us exile a creature with mana value three or less. We have four copies of Michiko's Reign of Truth. When it triggers, target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each artifact and or enchantment we control. And then it flips into a creature that gets plus one plus one for each artifact or enchantment we control. We have four copies of Tough Cookie from Wilds of Eldrain, one in a green for a 2-2. It's an artifact creature itself. And then when it ETBs, we create a food token. So this actually gets us two artifact ETB triggers which goes great with Yoshin Dissident. So for green and a white, we get a 1-1, one, one, and whenever an artifact ETB is under our control, we put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature we control. Again, that also combos well with the Ozolith to put two counters for every ETB trigger. And then we have four copies of Patchwork Automaton, two mana 1-1 one, one with Ward 2. Whenever we cast an artifact spell, put a counter on it. The last two slots we used up for Anax Sentry, two and a white for a 1-4, it's an artifact creature. And when it enters the battlefield, we can exile an artifact or creature an opponent controls with mana value 3 or less. So you can play this deck with all basics, or maybe just basics and a couple of the common tap lands, like the gain lands. But the untapped duels really do make a big difference, especially in your aggressive decks. So this is a good use of a wild card, and I would recommend it if you don't already have the dual lands in standard. This is probably the best wild card you can spend in the game. And then we're playing one copy of Mirex. Good thing about this land is when it comes into play, we can tap it for one mana of any color the turn it comes in, so it's not going to disrupt our early game. But then it's a nice mana sink late in the game. We can pay three and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might, and it is an artifact, so it will trigger some of our artifact ETB stuff like Yoshin Dissident. So that's the deck. Let's go ahead and jump into game number one. This looks good to me. So we have a turn one play with Skrelv. The untapped land is nice here. We'll get to drop Patchwork Automaton. Now it does have Ward 2, so we can attack with the Might safely here. Okay, Fading Hope, that's interesting. Maybe they really needed to scry. Not the most mana efficient play from them, I don't think. Um, I guess we drop Skrelve. And then let's just get Michiko down. It's not the most effective use of this card. There you go, we eat up a negate anyway. Hit them for two down to 18. We really have all the lands we need at this point. Get Ginger Brute down. So now we aren't going to attack with the Skrelv. Well, yeah, we're not going to attack with Skrelv. Not yet. Okay, we don't care about the Toxic. That's not what this deck is trying to do. Uh, we miss a point of damage there, but we've grown the Patchwork Automaton. We know they're playing Bounce. We want to not let them reset our Patchwork Automaton if we can help it. Okay, so we're going to assume that they've got some kind of protection spell here, right? So do we... Glass Casket or Annex Sentry? Well, we can't double spell right now anyway. So if they give Haughty Jin Hexproof, we still... Okay. So casting their instant while they can afford it, Haughty Jin gives them a discount. Okay, land in the graveyard. Get to exile the Jin. Again, we're gonna keep Skrelv available. 
Pwn it down to nine. Hopefully they just slam like a Telerian Terror. Okay. So they can't cast a spell and trigger the Seed Shark. This might just be... Let's see. Okay, Negate. So this isn't game, but we do get to... Let's see how we want to do this. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is lethal if we just do this. So there you go. Exile the Seed Shark. Hit for nine. Good game. On to the next one. Good enough, for sure. Get to start on an untapped land. And we will probably... Probably lead on Automaton. Since it can dodge removal. We might hit a counter spell here, but that's totally fine. Think. Hmm. If we hit a counter, who would we rather lose? Probably Dissident. I probably want the Automaton over the Dissident, I think. Okay, so we do eat the counter spell there, as predicted. Checking our graveyard. Okay. That's cool. We're just gonna glass casket this now. Can't let them go off with that. And next turn we can double spell. We can play Automaton into the Ozolith. Okay, assuming we don't eat a bunch of counter spells here. But this way we're taxing their mana. You know, we can't let them just cast a bunch of cheap instants with the Jin in play. Okay, Plone hits their land drop. So now we're gonna go Automaton first, and it might eat a counter. No counters, that's good. Maybe they have a negate for the Ozolith. Spell Pierce, okay. Still get the counter. Okay, Thirst for Discovery, digging for a land drop, I'm assuming. Okay. So we're gonna have a uh, Terror coming down for them, I'm assuming. Maybe next turn. Okay, so we're gonna go Dissident first. Then Ginger Brute to get the triggers. I think we'll put the counter for Dissident on the Ginger Brute. Just to avoid uh, removal on the Dissident here. That tends to be the target. And we're going to target Automaton since it has a ward. Are they about to target the Automaton and... No? Okay. Okay, here we go. Coming in for nine. I'm assuming a bounce on the Ginger Brute. Yep, which is fine. We probably have a Telerian Terror coming down for them next turn, I'm assuming. So we don't run removal that can deal with a creature as big as the Terror, but we can punch through it. So we're getting another trigger on Michiko. If they bounce Automaton, that's kind of okay. Okay, we have to target the Automaton. We need to tax the mana. Um, Ginger Brute first. Counter on Ginger Brute. We're just going to spread them around. I think they have more bounce. So we need to uh, try to play around it if we can. Because they can pay the ward for that now. Yeah. Hopefully they don't have any more. Let's just spread it a little bit. 
And then drop this as well. No reason not to. Counter spell. Sure. Okay, we hit them for five. Opponent down to eight. Nice thing here is if we get Now that we're stuck at just top decking, we can start doing this. Uh, we'll make Ginger Brute a 4-4. Four, four, so it can attack through. They probably don't want this block. Do we attack with Dissident? No, I don't think so. Okay, so if they can't remove Ginger Brute, they die next turn because we can make it unblockable. And then deal them four. Excellent. Good game. This looks good. We're gonna go Wormlet first into Automaton. It's nice to get Skrelv down first, but I get kind of greedy with the artifact triggers because that's really how this deck wins is you just drop these creatures super early and just grow them as quickly as you can. Because really you need Skrull to come down on first on the first turn to start protecting your stuff. But if we do that, we don't get to go... I do Automaton now. Because if they can't remove these early creatures, you just kind of run away with the game. Okay. Exiling Wormlet. That is a good trade for us, mana-wise. That's a good sign. That probably means they don't have board wipes here. So let's go Wormlet. Skrelv, Ginger Brute. And just grow our stuff. Okay, Ginger Brute. Jam for four. Kind of auto lose to board wipes, unfortunately. But the ward on Automaton is pretty huge. Okay, so we unfortunately did not get to untap with Skrelv. But that is their whole turn. Another good exchange on mana. Okay, and now... We're gonna start leaving Skrelv back. And hopefully we just draw into some action here. I've drawn a lot of lands. Ooh. Yeah, that's probably gonna be the game. Unfortunately. But, crazier things have happened. We're gonna give it a go. They flipped that. We do have removal for an incubate token. Okay, another land, unfortunately. But if they can't kill us, we can just start picking away at them here. Especially if they just whiff on removal. Assuming they're going to find ways to start to put pressure on us. And might even end up dropping uh, Atroxa. Which at that point, the game is definitely over. Okay, herd migration. So we're on a clock. Okay. It's not bad. Hey. <laughs> we just need to draw one artifact and them to whiff on removal and we can win this game. A lot has to happen. So we go to nine, we go to one. Oh, haste. Okay, good game. Almost still snuck a win out of that one. That was close. A little risky if we don't hit green, but I think I'm actually gonna keep this. Because if we do hit green, this is actually a pretty good hand. Uh, I'll offer a trade with the Sleeper, if they want it. Uh, 
Just make that thing a 2-2. Two -two. Want to race? No. Okay. So now, do we go Michiko, make it a 3-3? Three -three? Because then next turn we can go, or do we just play Dissident and pass? A little worried they're going to drop, they're going to drop a 3-3. Three -three. Probably uh, the Graveyard Trespasser next turn. If we go Ozolith, yeah, no blocks here. And then I'm gonna assume we have a Graveyard Trespasser. Oh, Celestis, that's better. I'm cool with that. So let's go Ozolith. I'm assuming they're gonna have a one mana removal spell here. We'll see. We're gonna spread these counters out a little bit though. And let's see if we can jam. We do get around cut down here. Okay, they probably would have removed the dissident in response. Hmm. Okay, obliterator. That's tricky. Do we go Michiko? Yeah, let's go Michiko. Hit a Ginger Brute. Uh, we just go... Can't be blocked. Can't be blocked. Hit for 10. And if they can't remove these, we're in, we're in good shape. If they have a fight spell, we're gonna be really sad. We'll just sack all of our lands, though. Because we have lethal on board. Okay. They go to three. Let's see. Okay, so we go trigger on brute. Okay, we go Ozolith. Sure. That is one plus of this deck, is it does get around go for the throat because they can't remove your key threats. Sacrifice a non-token creature. We resolve and we sack this one. Okay, can't be blocked. Hit for seven. GG's. Good one, Ginger Brute. Nice job. And if you want to see more budget decks just like this one, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.